and welcome to worship. Um, we're going to begin this morning with our gathering hymn. Please stand as you are able.
In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for children's The child
the effect that he has on all of us, and that so many years after he was here, we still believe. We do believe, right? We do believe. We still believe. Regardless of what happens, regardless of what tribulations we're under, and it seems these days like we have a lot of tribulation. We always believe. Because, because, He, He is our miracle. He's our miracle. And you being here today just goes to show He worked a miracle. You're a believer. And that's pretty extraordinary and awesome in my book. And for all of us to continue to believe, it must be something wonderful. All right, let's go make a miracle. This reading is from Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation burns like her, her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hands of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hands of your God. You shall, not, you shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts by the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. And to another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chose, chooses. Word of God, Word of Life. Galilee. 
And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. significant other, hopefully a long, long time ago, who you knew was no good for you, who your friends and family begged you to stay away from, and yet they promised you they had changed. And so you took them back a third time. In some ways, that's sort of how 2022 feels, isn't it? I mean, many of us began 2020 excited. The year seemed like it was going to be full of new adventures and possibilities. And it was just not the sorts of adventures and possibilities we had hoped for. And then came 2021. This year, everything was going back to normal. Vaccines were on the horizon. Our kids were going to get back in in-person school at some point. By summer, we would have forgotten that there was ever a pandemic, right? That's what we thought. Alas, it wasn't such smooth sailing after all. These past couple of years have been rather rough. They've been empty because of too much sickness and too much death. Too much political tension. Too many protests or reasons for protests. Toilet paper shortage. Riots. Murder hornets. Locust invasions. There were fires 
and droughts and floods. And maybe more personal, families were divided over opposing viewpoints. And there were those who weren't able to be with their loved ones. There was isolation, depression, fear, churches closing. And then it ended with Betty White dying. Which is proof that 99 can be too soon. As we entered 2022, I think most of us thought it was time we were ready for a fresh start. And so did the Omicron virus. <laughs> that variant is, really thinks it gets a fresh start. Hopefully it'll be ending soon. And then just as we are grieving America's grandma, this past week, Bob Saget, who many Consider America's dad went and entered life eternal. And I got to share with you the cold and the clouds, they are getting to me. There are days I just want to sit on the sofa and pull the blanket up over my head and watch Golden Girls and Full House and wait until 2023. <laughs> Anyone else there with me? I'm telling y'all, none of you are allowed to get sick or die because we've reached the quota. <laughs> and there are times <laughs> where I do identify with those six empty stone jars that were sitting there at that wedding in we just read about. I don't know that I'm alone in that. I'm wondering if the family of that wedding party also maybe felt as empty as those six stone jars. If they did, they would have soon if Jesus hadn't intervened when he did. You see, where we're reading in John's Gospel today, it is the second chapter early on in Jesus' ministry. At this point, he only had four disciples. And somehow he managed to get an invitation for the five of them, along with his mom, to go to this wedding in Cana. Now, in the culture, in that time and place, weddings lasted about seven days. And throughout those seven days, the host family would provide all the food and all the wine. And the wine wasn't just wine to drink. The wine symbolized joy. And maybe helped a little bit with the joy at the party. And if one ran out of wine at a wedding, that would be horrifying. It's not like they could just run down the street to Beth Mo and get more. It didn't work that way. The host couldn't just pull out a margarita mixer and get out a bottle of tequila and make it all good. And they couldn't very well tell all of their guests, that's it, you're done iced tea from now on. To run out of wine at the wedding would have been devastating for the host family. It would have been humiliating. Like, for the rest of their lives, that family could not walk through town 
holding their head up high. Like someone was definitely losing a job. But not only a job, they were losing their dignity and their honor. Like it wasn't literally life or death, but it would feel like it. Like that marriage may as well have been cursed and it hadn't even begun yet. And Mary notices partway through the week that this is happening, that they've won, run out of wine. And so she discreetly takes Jesus aside and lets him know. And Jesus' response, not too so different from what Gloria was saying, is basically, not my circus, not my monkeys. And I imagine Mary rolled her eyes at him. And like most good parents who know that their children have more potential than they're willing to put in the effort sometimes, Mary ignored him and turned to the servants and instructed them to do whatever Jesus told them. Now, it so happened that there at the party were these six large stone jars used for purification. They were empty, but each one could hold 20 to 30 gallons of water, which meant in all there could be 120 to 180 gallons right there. And so Jesus told the servants to go and fill them. I'm not sure how long it took to fill that many gallons, but they did. And then they took a little taster over to the chief steward, who reported that it was the best wine ever. And why did you wait so long to serve this stuff? And it wasn't just that there was enough for the chief steward to taste. Think about it. That was the equivalent of 50 to 75 cases of wine. Imagine somewhere between 606 and 908 bottles of wine. That's 3,000 to 4,600 glasses of wine. I owe Pastor Mark Price the um, credit for doing that math. <laughs> He's a Lodi, he knows this stuff. <laughs> but that's a lot of wine. It is. That's more wine than they were going to need for the rest of the party, for sure. Crisis averted. And Jesus hadn't actually lifted a finger. He didn't have to. But what Jesus did do is what Jesus always does. He provided abundance where there had been scarcity. Jesus brought joy where there had been despair. Jesus filled that which was empty. He invested in the circus and he trained all the monkeys. That's the promise we have for 2022. That on those days when we are feeling empty, when the cold and the clouds are overwhelming, when we can't imagine a way out, when we're feeling as dry and barren as six unused purification jars, Jesus gives us reason to hope. This next year, 
I can't claim that everything's going to be great. Because in every bed of roses, there are thorns. But this next year, there will be babies who are born. There will be baptisms. There will be marriages. There will be new relationships. There may be growing pains, but that means that there will be opportunities to grow and to learn. Opportunities to forgive and be forgiven. Opportunities to connect and to reconnect, to discover some of those gifts we heard in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Some of those gifts are our own that we got this far in life and we didn't know we could do that. And we can. And we can see it in others. There will be beauty. And Jesus promises an abundance of joy. And so, my siblings, fellow beloved children of God, who have been splashed in the baptismal waters and filled with the Holy Spirit, we can all be confident that no matter the highs or lows, no matter where we go or stay, whatever comes, Jesus has claimed us as his circus and his monkeys and promises to always be.
So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that Jesus has made. By your spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic borders. Open your heart to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction. That all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of mercy. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers towards compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace. Hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in the moment of need, to provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day. Today, we especially lift up to you, Ken, Ellen, Chloe, Sandy, Bev, Jay, Harding, Kaylee, Kaylee Lee, Kat Catalina, Jasmine, for the loved ones of Becky Crawford and for Pastor Kay Doyle. We also lift up to you those suffering from COVID, the medical professionals on the front line, the first responders, the people of Afghanistan and Ukraine, and we pray for our military. Please bring wisdom, guidance, and discernment to all our world leaders to help bring peace. We now lift up to you those we name before you now. Awesome. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry and thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of mercy. Yeah. 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 You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, and are facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace. Yeah. Yeah. God of grace. Oh God, you make us in your own image and redeem us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and the hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth. So that in your good time, every people and nation may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh God, call us into a deeper relationship to be your church for the sake of the world. Help us to see with new eyes the injustice within church and society. Call us to have a loving heart that respects and uplifts the humanity and dignity of every person. Open our ears to listen to and learn from the experiences of people of color. Open our mouths to speak up and about injustices. Join us with others to work for racial equality and inclusion for all people. God, in your mercy, yeah. our prayer. you bless us through spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way 
of courageous faith. God of grace. Amen. Amen. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness. 
and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son, through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father in heaven, heaven. hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Come as you 
have Bibles, if you don't have one, that's fine. Just come and join us at 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening. Um, let's see. Also, um, for all of our visitors today, um, if you haven't already filled out a visitor card that should be in the pew in front of you, please do so, so we can keep in better contact. Um, let's see. Um, parking lot update is, they're still waiting for everything to dry out, right Jim? <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much the gist of it. We're waiting, hopefully we'll get it finished soon. But at least it's nice in the meantime. Um, and then very important, congregational meeting is February 6th. And um, I think we've got a few things to vote on. So it will be right after church on February 6th. Um, any, I don't know if there's anything else. Any other um, announcements? Parking lot, I don't know, did you mention it? I, I just said we're waiting for everything to dry out. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hopefully, uh, who knows? It all depends on the weather. The other thing regarding the congregational meeting, uh, it's been two years since we've had a congregational meeting for obvious reasons. And uh, I wanted to make sure that all of our members here are aware that we have two at-large positions on council that uh, are available. If you feel interested or are, uh, might be interested in serving on church council, uh, I would invite you to give that consideration. And uh, if you've got any questions about it, we meet generally every other month uh, during the day on Tuesdays. Uh, if you have any questions or you might find yourself interested in it, please get a hold of me. I'm Jim Williams. <laughs> Thought I'd have that. <laughs> um, also, if you haven't seen them yet, we still have a number of our Christ in Our Home devotionals. They're for February through March. Um, pick one up. They're free. They're good. Um, also, right after we got the um, December <laughs> Living Lutheran, I think the next week we got the January, February one, and they look a lot alike, so that's why I didn't announce it, because I didn't realize we had a new one, but we do. So um, the other one had a white background with some, like, yellow in the cover, <laughs> and this one does too. So they're very similar. Make sure you pick up the January, February one if you haven't. Um, and with that, um, I feel like there should be more announcements. Okay. Um, please stand as you are able to receive the benediction. The God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh.